everyone, Tyson the Subaru Specialist and Subaru Prince George here. Today, taking a look at the 2024 Subaru Crosstrek Limited in the Sapphire Blue Pearl, the smallest crossover offered by Subaru in the highest trim level. So this has all of the top end features that are standard in the Crosstrek. No additional bell and whistle or package is missing. Anything else that isn't on this would be an accessory. So limited, full load. This is the Sapphire Blue absolutely sparkles when the sun's hitting it. Absolutely phenomenal color. The camera's really not doing it justice. So he's got a redesign for the 2024 model year. So this is the first of a new generation. Limited has the 2.5 liter four cylinder, 182 horsepower. They're pretty zippy with the 2.5. They're zippy with the two liter. This is just 30 more horsepower. So they're quite nice. So new front end on it, new updated platform. That honeycomb hexagonal shaped grill. We've got those gray accents out of the grill and into your smaller, more aggressively styled LED steering responsive headlight. And we always have high beam assist on all of the cross tracks for 24. We have this nice little kind of C cut channel with our LED fog lights. And you'll notice the magnetite gray, gloss gray, whatever you want to call it, is the highlight color on the Limited. So it's not in your face like the Onyx. It is a refined color. Definitely more aggressive looking than the previous gen when you have them side by side. This is more angular, more sporty. And that's part of what appeals to people. And this is, it's a sporty looking crossover. It's nice. We have cladding that extends from the bumper around the wheel well. We have functional vents. You can actually see through there. And on the Limited, you get 18 inch alloy wheels. So these are the same wheels as you find on the Onyx, just with the machined alloy face. We've got gray metallic painted mirror caps. Mirror caps have the turn signals integrated into them. Subaru's about safety. That's just an extra piece of visibility for people. With headlights being so bright, it's nice that they offer that. The roof rails are painted in the same gray. So these are the only roof rails in the Crosstrek lineup that come painted. Everything else is black. These color to match your mirrors, match your fog light surrounds. Flatting even extends up onto the doors there. Now, fuel door, rear passenger side. If the driver door is unlocked, this is unlocked. Pop it open. Now, if I click lock on the key fob, which has just came in, it's sold already, but still in a bag. Lock, the pin shoots out. Click unlock, unlocks. And when it locks, you've got that in there running regular unleaded fuel. You don't necessarily gain any benefits from premium. It's not tuned to run on premium. My favorite view of the Crosstrek is the rear three quarter view. And it's all because of that rear taillight. I love this new style rear taillight. I love how it wraps. I love the black and the red contrast. I think it's just a great looking rear taillight. And I know that that is something that's kind of odd for someone to say. Uh, we have functional vent out of the rear bumper. I don't know if the camera's gonna pick it up. You can see paint through there, reflectors. We've got the backup sensors integrated into the rear bumper, those little circles, and they're going to apply the brakes if it thinks you're gonna hit in reverse between speeds of one and 15 kilometers an hour. Now you can totally turn off the rear assist braking and I can show you how to do that in the video, but it's a good looking rear end on it. It's body color between the taillights on the Onyx. You would have black between there. I quite like the body color match. We have this kind of faux diffuser down here at the bottom. Super's done a really good job of making this an attractive crossover slash SUV. That little door right there, you pop that off and that's where you put the recovery eye bolt that you get with the Crosstrek. Proximity key, as long as the key's on your person, between these two stars, rubber switch. We've got our backup camera there and we have the ability to set a pin to unlock the vehicle in the event you don't have your key or you want to disable the proximity portion of your key and put it in the vehicle. Go hiking or kayaking or surfing, something like that. There's a lot more room behind the second row of seats in the back of a cross truck than people expect. Privacy cover standard on the Limited. It's got a handle way better than the previous ones where you just grab it. it makes it easier to use. And this privacy cover is removable. It's just a telescopic piece, which is nice. So if you have taller boxes or something like that, you dramatically increase the storage space. Allergen cargo light, that'll shut off when I close the hatch. We've got grocery bag hooks. Now the bottom grocery bag hooks aren't grocery bag hooks, but you can get a cargo net accessory that ties into the grocery bag hooks in that, in addition to tying into your 
hard mount physical tie downs here, which are nice. Each corner, cup slash bottle holders for tailgating. Carpet floor mats, because this customer decided to add the rubber mats. Underneath the false floor, we have our spare tire tools, our spare tire. That's the eye bolt that I was telling you about. That's the piece that you screw in to that little square there. Now you do have one on the front driver or passenger side of the car as well, same thing, but you only get one eye bolt with the car. Got this nice little mountain motif, with the cross track Easter egg in there. It's all about the little details that Super has done with this. Now you can see third seat belt comes out of the back, goes through that piece there. That's so everyone ends up with a three-point harness. See that red toggle is up. It means I can push the seats forward. And that front seat's reclined a little far so it didn't go down all the way. But you kind of get the idea how much storage there is. There's quite a bit. I'm a bigger guy. Could I sleep in this if I absolutely had to? Yes. Would I be the most comfortable? No, I'd be more comfortable in something like an Outback with a little bit more room. But makes it easy to use. Putting this back in one-handed is probably more the most difficult part of this. And it's just about lining it up and making sure that you've got it in the square and then making sure that the telescopic piece can extend into it. Not hard, just the hard when you're holding a camera. Handle to pull down on, easy close, easy to do. Yeah, that blue in the sun. I think that this is, this is probably the top three colors in my opinion, in the cross track. Something I didn't mention, 8.7 inches of minimum ground clearance. And of course, being a Subaru, I automatically assume people assume this, it's all wheel drive. But 8.7 inches of minimum ground clearance, that's more than your average half ton pickup. Take a look at the minimum ground clearance specs on the F-150, GMC, Chevy, and Dodge. We have more in a crossover, which is great. These seats go up very, very easy. Essentially, if the red's showing, it's not locked in place. You just have to give it a good push. Really easy. Second row, you've got more than adequate headroom for taller passengers. You've got great leg room. You can fit three people comfortably across. I'm a bigger guy. I fit in here with the front seat all the way back. Obviously, if not if it's reclined all the way or significantly, the seat's more up and down like it is. I fit in here. Being the limited, the full load, you get the light and dark gray leather upholstery with the orange contrast stitching. Orange is the interior contrast color. They've even got it in the perforations, which I think is super cool. I it's a nice touch that I really like. You don't see that in a lot of vehicles. Fold down armrest with the integrated cup holders. Out of the center console, we have two USB ports, USB A and C for charging. Keep everyone connected on those longer trips. Map back pocket on the rear of the front passenger seat. We've got easy access to the latch system, the lower anchors and tethers for car seats. Got those high wall floor mats that I was mentioning previously. This is designed to be grippy and is textured. And this is designed to be used as a step if you're loading something on the roof, if you've got crossbars, you're loading something on that. And the reason they want you standing there, the tire sits inside the fender. You're not gonna get as much of your foot on that as you will that. And if I'm standing on here straight and I go up, I'm right at the back here of the roof rail system. So I'll be leaning and could perhaps put myself in a precarious situation, which none of us want. You've got that little black plastic piece. I get asked about that all the time. What is that? Pan over here, we've got this little silver extra crash side impact safety bar Subaru's installed. It's designed to reduce intrusion into the passenger cab in the event of a side collision. Like I said, Subaru's all about safety. Rear door card, hard touch plastics, soft touch armrest, Contrast stitching, really nice, easy to grab door handle. I know that's something silly to focus on, but I notice it. A little bit of storage there with a bottle holder. We've got our power window switch. If you need it, child lock, keep your kids, grandkids, drunk friends from running away. Now, it is a proximity key. So this never needs to come out of your purse, your pocket. It just needs to be on your person within 46 inches. So to lock it, I've got these lines on the door handle. I simply touch it and it locks. There's a small audible chirp. You can disable that. The hazards flash. Again, you can disable that. And then to open it, unlock it, you, again, you just walk up, put your hand in the handle so long as the key's within 46 inches, and it unlocks. Very easy to use. Up front, door card looks very, very similar to that of the rear, except we have soft touch door card. Also have soft touch armrest. Front two power windows are auto power. Regular rear power windows 
window lock, your power mirror adjustment if you need to adjust those. You've got a little bit more storage along with the bottle holder. And we do also get the Harman Kardon audio system in the Limited. It is a nice upgrade. It sounds great in my opinion. Driver's seat is a power driver's seat, including lumbar support. And 2024 is the first year you have ever been able to get lumbar support in a Subaru Crosstrek. Seats are, again, leather upholstered. Same color scheme as the back. And these seats are actually designed to reduce fatigue over longer driving distances. Subaru did a lot of research. You don't vibrate as much. There's less noise vibration harshness, partly because of the seat. And it stops your pelvis from shifting with these little extra bolsters. And pelvis movement is actually a quite significant factor in being fatigued while driving. That's what they found in the research. So they've mitigated that with these seats. We've got nice faux carbon fiber trim, continues throughout the cab, ties it all together by the driver's left knee. Scroll wheel for the brightness of the gauges. Fuse panel down here. Foot on the brake, light goes green. Foot's not on the brake, light's not green. Kind of hard to see with the sun right there, but turn it on. We have blind spot detection indicators on both side mirrors. So they'll illuminate orange on the corresponding side. And here, I'll turn it off and on again so that you can see that. But it illuminates orange like that on the corresponding side when someone's in your blind spot or if they're going to be in your blind spot momentarily. It's a pretty cool system. Not a replacement for shoulder checking, but it, it's a great enhancement. Visibility in this. Pretty darn good. I'm just giving you my field of view when I earned a shoulder check. I can't say I have a complaint about it. I like it. I like small vehicles, so that could be part of it. Steering wheel adjustment. Bottom left, you pull down on this, and you've got tilt and telescopic. You can adjust it to drivers of varying heights, leg, and arm lengths. Steering wheel, leather wrapped with the orange contrast stitching. Feels good in the hands. Left-hand side of the steering wheel is primarily focused on Bluetooth and audio controls. You can accept calls, you can hang up, you can issue voice commands. We've got our volume toggle. We can switch from AM to FM to satellite to USB, switch between our presets. We've got this toggle and this used to be the volume toggle that actually changes our small little center display, gives us a little bit of information depending upon what we want to look at. Clock, outside thermometer, I like that. Small personal preference when it comes to that. Easy to read gauges. We always have a digital speedometer there. Always have the analog. Right hand side of the steering wheel, we have our adaptive cruise and our lane centering. Now, both of these systems use these three black boxes, those color stereo eyesight cameras to look for pedestrians, cyclists, road lines, and other vehicles. These cameras are also responsible for doing automatic emergency braking, pre-collision throttle management. All of that safety stuff is from those cameras, which Subaru has smartly put behind the windshield because windshield glass is cheaper than replacing sensors and radar sensors, that sort of thing on the front. Now, when I turn on cruise, I get an image of the cross track and you'll notice there's four bars ahead of the cross track, all the way down to one, back up to four. That is the follow distance behind the vehicle ahead of you that you will follow at if you catch up while using cruise. Four bars at 100 kilometers an hour is roughly 150 to 180 feet behind the vehicle ahead of you. So a fairly safe distance. If we toggle down, you will follow closer. It will bring you to a stop, but I don't recommend you let it do that because it's pretty close to the rear bumper of the car ahead of you. I'm not a fan of that. Lane centering, little steering wheel icon pops up. You'll notice those gray lines on either side. If the eyesight cameras can see the road lines, whether that's one side or both sides, it'll illuminate on the corresponding side above 60 kilometers an hour. And it'll actually give you gentle steering input to help keep you in the middle of your lane. Great assist for long distance driving. You're way less fatigued at the end of the day of driving. Pop it on halfway through your eight hour drive and you're going to be less fatigued. You're not going to be wandering in your lane. You're not going to be overcorrecting all the time. It's fantastic. Now, it does take a little bit to get used to. I do recommend you let someone give you a demonstration how it works. I think it's fantastic. Intelligent and sport driving modes. So intelligence, what it defaults to. That's what it, that's day-to-day -day driving, most fuel efficient way to do it. Sport is a little bit more aggressive. You can see that yellow line's a little sharper and you're going to go faster, sooner, use a little more fuel, sit at a higher RPM for more spirited driving. Heated steering wheel. Now I know the light's faint, but it is on. Now it's important to note, it doesn't heat between the seam, just kind of where you're supposed to keep your hands. 
and there's a dead spot here as well but it gets cooking like up to 40 degrees celsius it's pretty darn warm we have paddles downshift upshift even with the automatic cvt we can manually select our gears great for downshifting not riding your brakes going down big hills i use my paddles all the time i think they're fantastic over here we have an 11.6 inch touchscreen and above that, I don't know if you saw it, there was a little red light. That is the driver focus system. So it's looking to scan my face and it's looking to tell if I'm paying attention while I'm driving. It'll actually tell me, pay attention to the road if I'm not looking at the road. It'll also tell me if I'm drowsy. <laughs> so it flashes a little message up here, keep eyes on road, or it'll flash a little cup of coffee and say, hey, you should probably take a break. It's not an actual camera recording you. It's an infrared camera. So it's looking for distance between eyes, jawline, nose, that sort of thing to tell which way you're, you're facing. Top portion of the 11.6 inch, we've got what we're listening to. We've got navigation destinations, widgets, which are easy to change if you don't like those. And if you've watched any of my other videos, I always change it to the same ones. My preferred. I show customers how to change them. Most of the time they agree, they like those. We've got weather, which is part of your satellite radio trial. We've got dual function X mode, which is like four low in a pickup. So you've got normal, you've got snow and dirt, you have deep snow and mud. It's for extreme off-road situations under 40 kilometers an hour. Like I said, it's like four low in a pickup. Main portion, we have map. No subscription, it's navigation powered by TomTom. Tom. It's got that for the life of the vehicle. Radio, media, and phone are fairly, fairly self-explanatory. Radio's radio, media is Bluetooth, auxiliary, USB, et cetera. Phone allows you to hook your phone up to Bluetooth. Under apps, we have wireless Android Auto, wireless CarPlay. You do gain access to the My Subaru app after the vehicle's registered in your name. My Subaru doubles up there. You can actually book service appointments through the car, which is pretty cool, at your nearest Subaru dealer, not just the originating Subaru dealer. Change settings around. Under car info, we have driving statistics. You can set maintenance reminders. Really easy to do. Second screen, we can turn off the display. We have valet mode, so you can lock certain features. So if you lend the car to someone that can't make any changes, you can turn off traction control. Auto vehicle hold is a brake holder for construction, drive through or rush hour traffic. If your foot gets sore sitting on the brake, depending how long you're waiting, you can add additional shortcuts if you want. We've got volume and tuning knobs, which is nice. We still have some physical knobs. Home button always takes you to this screen. You can disable the auto start stop. You can turn on auto vehicle hold from here. It's nice. They've added a few buttons. You don't have to go through multiple menus to shut some stuff off or turn it on. Under the car, you have vehicle control. You can control how fast you get back to speed while using cruise. When you pull out and no one's ahead of you, you can turn off the steering responsive headlights. Doubles up on turning on off the start stop. For driving assistance, you can turn off the lane departure. You can turn off the driver focus system, monitoring system, warning volume. Lots of changes you can make to these cars to kind of make it yours. You can hook up additional phones and set driver profiles if you really want. We have our climate controls on the bottom portion. We do still have physical buttons on either side and it goes up and down in 0.5 degree increments. Fan strength buttons right here, really big, hard to miss, hard to fat finger and not touch that. Click that, brings it up. I can click, I can drag, I can sync the temperature back just to driver controlled control where I want my airflow, if I want AC on, if I want to recirculate the air, max AC, really easy to do. I can turn it off so the airflow is focused just to the front, which is nice, or I can have it set to the rear so it puts more air to the rear if you've got passengers. Got our heated mirrors, back window and windshield wiper de-icers, which are where your wipers sit on the front windshield. Front defrost, when I put it in reverse, backup camera pops up. Rear assist braking's on, parking sensors are on. You can see the top of the bumper there, so you have something to relate to. Now, I can clean the backup camera from inside the vehicle, and I do that by twisting and holding the end of the of the wiper stock towards myself. I twist. I'm not going to do that because the new owner's coming down shortly, and I don't want the back of the car covered in washer fluid. But you can clean the backup camera. It's pretty cool. Below the screen, we've got two USBs, an auxiliary, and a 10-watt wireless charger. If you don't want it charging, turn it off. But it is nice. It does heat charge your phone pretty quickly your phone is going to get warm while using the 10 watt fast charger that's normal don't be alarmed automatic cvt i do really like the synthetic shift boot feels good in the hands not that you're probably going to be touching it a whole bunch but that is nice that they went with a nice feeling material more contrast stitching i'm in drive if i pull and hold towards myself that's manual mode and i have full control with the paddles up and down 
I've got park brake, you pull up to activate. If my foot is not on the brake and I push down, it does not go off. It actually says to press the brake pedal. So foot on the brake, push down, off it goes. Heated seats, high and low for both the driver and passenger. I like that they kept it with the physical switches. We've got offset cup holders with drink razors, 12 volt outlet, a little bit of storage, really nice soft touch armrest with a ton of storage. There's no power points in there, but it, you, there's a place to run cables through, which is cool. We've got SOS and roadside. That's part of the three-year trial to the My Subaru Connected Services you get with most new Subarus. We've got our sunroof controls, got our map lights. It is just a regular size sunroof, tilt and slide. And let's take a look under the hood. So I'm going to shut it off. It's, it's a pretty quiet running vehicle, but down here, there you go. Now, open the hood. As long as you're facing the front of pretty much any Subaru, your hand goes into the right-hand side of the Subaru logo, in facing down, move from right to left, and there's a lever that you move from right to left and left. It's just that little lever right there that you move. And there's your 2.5 liter four-cylinder boxer engine, 182 horsepower. Looks fairly standard under the hood much like the Porsche on the Outback, and pretty much everything in yellow is what the average consumer is going to touch during your ownership, unless you're, you know, a mechanic or mechanically inclined. We've got our oil dipstick, we have our coolant reservoir, we've got our washer fluid reservoir, we've got the oil filler right next to our top mount oil filter. You do have easy access to the battery, which is nice, and we have brake fluid up there. I know it's not marked in yellow, but you have easy access to your air box, so you can change that air filter easily as well quite nice. I'll give you guys a final 360 degree walk around of the 2024 Subaru Crosstrek Limited and the smallest full load crossover that Subaru has in their lineup. And this is of course in the sapphire blue, super sparkly. I love this color. I think that the camera isn't really doing it justice, but it's something that I think you should all take a look at in person. Great looking car. Most popular Subaru vehicle in our lineup right now is the Crosstrek. Kind of meets everyone's needs, most people's needs. So that is a quick look at the 2024 Subaru Crosstrek Limited in the Sapphire Blue Pearl. Thanks for sticking with me through the video. If you guys are looking for a Subaru, you're in British Columbia, you're close to British Columbia, please reach out to me directly. Or if you reach out to the dealership, ask to work with Tyson, the Subaru Specialist. I would love to help you guys find your perfect Subaru, new or pre-owned. If you have any questions about this car behind me or any of the tech in it, any of the vehicles on the lineup, put it in the comments below. I'm always looking to engage with you guys, answer your questions. And if you ask me a question I don't have the answer to, I get to find out. Thanks for watching. We'll talk soon.